Hey everybody, if I told you you can now play Automobilista and some other games with something like that, you'd say I'm crazy. April Fools, man, but it's not even the 1st of April. No, it's actually true. Thanks to the guys at Crew Chief. Well, they had a few days off, I suppose. You know, you're a genius, what do you do? You make a VR plugin for AMS. And my mind is blown, so thanks a million and then some more to the guys at Crew Chief. Uh, Iron Wolf, which I hope isn't his real name. That's gonna be weird on first dates. Uh, and Morton, he did a lot of work as well, and I'm sure I'm missing some people. So guys at Crew Chief, thank you very much. It's amazing. Uh, the support is awesome. It's native, and being an older game, the frame rate can be quite good and performance is fine. Uh, but there are some tricks and tips involved uh, for getting this to work properly. So in this video, I'll install the plugin and walk through some of the settings and see if we can get the best experience. So in short, if you like AMS and your VR no buy, well, get back to AMS because it's, ah, can't stress enough. My mind is blown, it works perfectly. So the first order of business is to shrink my face. All the links are uh, in the description down below. So you download, here we've opened the downloaded file uh, and here's my main AMS file. So Steam library, Steam apps, common automobilista. It's a matter of copying it over. Well, I'm not gonna do it because stuff is already there. Go to plugins. And now you, there is this crew chief vr.ini with some numbers here. And this is where you turn on, if it's one, you turn on vr. If it's zero, you turn it off. Let's turn it off for now. Right, back to Automobilista. Uh, just run config here. Let's just do a uh, low resolution windowed mode, uh, which it likes. All right, launch AMS, do some of the settings there. So now we're in AMS, let's go to the settings and display. And here you have exit confirmation. You have to turn that off. So don't forget that. And also the field of view. Um, you have to increase this, otherwise sometimes if you look, you move your head around, you'll see like the a tire disappear because it doesn't f understand that it has to render it. So this value has to be around 90. With my Pimax, I still see things disappearing. So I got it at 98, that's fine. So those are some, uh, some in-game settings. Um, another thing or two to uh, look at here is Locked Horizon. So this is gonna be subjective, but lock to horizon doesn't really lock the view to the horizon. <laughs> we, we were really good at naming things at Ryzen Studios. It's sort of lens stabilization, right? So if you go over bumps, then the camera doesn't orient, like doesn't do that as much. And I find it too stiff if you turn this completely off. So let's play with that if you want, but I tend to leave it at 100%, which is slight sort of less stiff regarding how your view is in, in the car. I prefer that, something to play with. Um, that's most of your thing here. If you have issues with performance, I always have shadows at medium, uh, the rest is fine, but shadows, they can be a frame rate hit. So that's one of the things to, uh, to lower. Um, I've heard people set a frame rate limit. Well, it will be limited to your uh, headset anyway but you can always limit it here. I don't know if that actually makes a, a difference. So limit this to a little bit more than the refresh rate of your headset, and then you're probably good to go. So shadows medium, make sure to have that exit confirmation off and uh, that should be good. And also don't use a too high resolution here for your uh, AMS, because it might make it impossible to click certain things. So once you've done that in game, that's good, but there are still a few more things we have to look at. So another setting worth looking at is in your documents folder, you find Automobilista, user data, then there's your name. I haven't changed this since the last race I did with uh, Jimmy and, uh, and uh, some of his friends. So this is me. <laughs> and then you have your uh, player file, your name PLR. So let's open that. What are we gonna do here? Um, I find it really disconcerting when the view has like fake shakes. Uh, RF2 tends to have that. AMS has that by default. It's meant to give you some chance of speed, but eh, it's annoying. So look for cockpit vibration MALT1 and MALT2, zero those. What this basically does is it's high speed camera shake that 
I haven't even checked because I've always turned this off if it still applies with the VR plugin. I think it probably will. So turn this to zero and you don't get fake, like you're on a cobblestone road even though you're on a smooth tra track. So zero these two malts, malt one and malt two. That's one in interesting thing you have to do to improve the experience, in my opinion. And while you are there, there's also controller.ini. And here, um, if you use a, a Bodnar system, uh, OSW, SimuCube, these uh, wheels, they often use the default Windows driver for force feedback. And this can, I don't know really who is to blame here. Uh, the way the game is programmed, the way this default driver checks the force feedback, uh, there are some issues there. And I found this to be a major performance hit. So skip updates. If you scroll down to the force feedback section in your controller any, so the one in your player folder, then you'll see skip updates. And if you set this number at seven, you get 90 Hertz up to 90 Hertz force feedback. Now, before you start thinking, hey, but I always use 360 and it's way better. Actually, probably 360 never is 360. Uh, we really try to make the force feedback rate quick, but I think at the end, we did some testing later, we found out still somewhere it is limited to the frame rate, right? So it doesn't matter if you turn this at to one, you think you have 360, but you probably still only have the force feedback rate of your headset. But if you turn it to one and you have one of those wheels that uses the default uh, Windows driver, you get big chugging. Uh, weirdly, the, the, the timing indicators when I use FPS VR, very useful to check your performance. The CPU and GPU are only taking six, seven milliseconds, but it's still very stuttery. So this creates a load somewhere in the driver loop, whatever, doesn't work well on my system. So seven for 90 Hertz. And I guarantee you, you won't feel a difference because you probably will never have more than 90 Hertz for feedback anyway, and it's still fine. So uh, if you play with the menus in AMS, uh, it will now not say 90 Hertz, it will say 360 Hertz. So it has to be level one, pure, low. So this has to be one and this seven. If you play with the Hertz in Automobilista, this will be overridden. So you, you might wanna check every now and then if this value is still seven. And if you get frame rate drops, make sure this hasn't gone back to a normal uh, lower value. So that's things to do here. And another thing to check is uh, go to your Steam folder, Automobilista, game data, vehicles, and then your car of choice. Uh, let's look at the Camaro here. If you go to the folder here, you will see a file called a cam, which has the camera property. So open that and you'll have the cockpit cam here. And there are a couple of things uh, you can do here. So let's start with the clipping planes which is here. You will find that if you move your head around in VR, uh, it can happen that you, you sort of the view clips through the seat or, or the, the tub of the car. So if you see that you can lower this value. So this is the distance in meters away from the camera where it sort of sees through objects. So if you make this smaller, now the camera, if it's within five centimeters of the edge of the car, it will sort of look through the car. So making this number smaller, make sure that you don't sort of weirdly look through the car. That's the first thing. Second thing is, uh, what, what is the second thing, Niels? Uh, good question. Orientation rate. So I mentioned in the game, I prefer having lock to horizon at 100%, and that sort of detaches the camera a little bit from the car, making it less stiff. And when the car goes like you're off the, on the grass, bumping on the grass, your view doesn't shake as violently. These numbers, 10, 250, and 10, these are sort of the stiffnesses of, that, of the camera mount, basically. The middle one always has to be really high. It's 250 here, which is instant, really. So that's, that's yaw. So you want the camera to rotate when the car rotates in steering. Uh, the first is pitch. So that's when you go over bumps. So the lower the number, the more sluggish the camera catches up to whatever the car is doing. So if you're going on a looping, which is very realistic and not in AMS. Uh, if this would be zero, the view would be looking straight ahead when you do the looping. And when the number is really high, the camera rotates, does the backflip almost in sync with, with the car. And the last is roll. So if you want to play with this lock to horizon, how much that sort of stabilizes the camera, you can lower these numbers, these 10 
the third and the, uh, and the second, the first and the third number, lower them. It will slow down the camera orientation and increase them will speed it up. So that's another thing uh, you can do there. Now a few words about the quality of your experience. This will be something you have to just mess with and, and play around with. So don't forget that force feedback setting I mentioned, that 90 hertz force feedback if you have one of those wheels. Otherwise, um, it's really up to you. So what I tend to do, I disable sweet effects here and I run a dis, uh, I uncheck the advanced settings. So if I went with AA here, and you might as well uh, do this with settings in your NVIDIA control panel or whatever software to force certain settings. This will of course also apply in VR and will increase the sort of the smoothness of the image at a penalty of performance. You can do it this way, or you can do it in Steam VR. Now it's at 100%. Raise, increase this will make it uh, less jagged and more smoothed and, and better. Or if you have like my, my Pimax, you know, we have settings as well uh, here with the render quality. And I haven't really done an in-depth check on which setting here gives the best look uh, and, and the least performance hit. So something to, to mess around with. However, a uh, positive note here, my CPU is a 2015 i5-4690K, it's a quad-core i5 with DDR3, uh, 1600 megahertz, I believe. It's really quite old and I can run this Pimax, which is double 4K resolution at quality of one easily, uh, 1.25 probably as well. It's the, it's the force feedback that limits my, strangely just the way this works, uh, limits my uh, quality that I can reach. But one or 1.25 is fine. I never drop below 75 uh, frames per second, which my Pimax does. So it's fairly light. Just make sure, tweak with these settings and make sure the force feedback isn't running too fast. If you have one of those wheels, then performance is fine. So now everything is set up. We can start AMS. However, let's make sure we apply VR rendering, save. Uh, you can start it from Steam or uh, just from the folder. I tend to do it here. Let's see. Right, so now in-game, we've got the settings done. I've been tweaking this amazing formula forward with some data and some slight existential issues I'm having with how cars should handle and stuff like that. But we will do another video about the actual headset. But here we are in VR and it works just fine. It's really cool. It's, it's, it's mind blown amazing. So definitely guys, check this out. It's totally awesome. And thanks again to the guys at Crew Chief for putting what must have been hundreds of hours of their spare time into making this work. It feels super native, super amazing. I keep repeating myself, but it's still amazing. It, I can't get over it. So try this out, it's amazing, do it now, get a VR headset. Words of wisdom, bye bye.